cracked Emacs crown. This clinical case review is about causes why Emacs crowns of anterior teeth may crack. Hello dear friends, let me introduce you a new clinical case, actually a new review of clinical case uh, that is related to anterior teeth and uh, lithium disilicate crown and causes why they may crack in some reasons. So here is initial situation where you can see frontal uh, teeth of upper jaw. Patient was not actually satisfied with color and shape and uh, ask us to make smile improvement. From the palatal side, you can see more dramatic view and you can see a very specific varying facets, which uh, shows us the, the position of the lower jaw aiming to move slightly forward. I would like to mention that this is full mouth rehab case because posterior teeth were even worse and we made full mouth reconstruction case and all was released in CR position. But today I will be focusing mainly on anterior crowns, not about full mouth rehab case. So what we made, we made freehand direct mock-up just to understand the length of frontal teeth which helps us to evaluate aesthetics and then we transfer this information to dental lab, uh, just making an impression. This case was done in tw uh, 2012, so basically it's pretty, it is pretty old case. Then my dental technician made wax up, um, considering the length of the frontal teeth that I gave him. Then we made a mock up, and then we started preparing teeth of this patient. This is how they looked after preparation. And I was pretty proud of that kind of outcome because uh, a lot of enamel was preserved, which is good for bonding. Uh, the preparations for full crowns here are pretty minimally invasive. And the good thing is that nowadays we can do minimally invasive preparations for bonded restorations, especially for pretty hard restorations like Emacs crowns, for example. Uh, but after short, certain period of time, I faced with problem. Just let me show you a few more macro picture of uh, prepared frontal teeth. Let me show you the final restorations. They are Emacs cut back and layered crowns, rubbing them isolation prior bonding, straight after cementation. This is lateral view and four years later. The patient is heavy smoker, so high dental hygiene was not very good. So don't take, uh, atten don't, don't pay attention too much to that, that aspect. But I would like to show you palatal side of the crowns, where we can see multiple cracks and even uh, one piece of ceramic missing on that lateral incisor. So let us now discuss with you causes why that happened. The reason number one that you may, you may take into consideration is occlusion. And you, and you will be right. Occlusion will make that kind of breakage or crack formation obviously. But considering the fact that we made full mouth rehab and occlusion was pretty stable, there were different other causes that I would like to share with you. So, first of all, we have to understand why ceramic was not cracked from vestibular aspect. Why we have crack only from the palatal side. Occlusion, let's say okay, but also there are two more reasons. The reason number one is that in palatal area and also in lingual area of lower teeth, there are flexural deformations. We have pretty extensive flexural deformations. And ceramic material being pretty rigid cannot resist against that flexural deformations and may crack. This is, by the way, the reason why the classic veneers like, uh, like incisal overlap, veneers may crack from palatal side 
as well. So the reason number one is elastic deformations. The reason number two is thickness of material. I was pretty sure that minimally invasive dentistry and also adhesive dentistry can help us to reduce thickness of our preparation and also to reduce thickness of the final restorations. From one point of view it is truth, but from another point of view it may not work, like in this case. Ivoclar, as a manufacturer of Emacs, recommends uh, to have minimum thickness of material about one millimeter in anterior region if you will bond these kind of restorations. In my case, the thickness were, were, was less than one millimeter. I think it was about 0 0.5 millimeters. If we are dealing with frontal area in for buccal side, which is not concave, and there are no, no that kind of elastic deformation, and if you will bond your Emacs or any other glass ceramic to, to the frontal area, you can use very thin materials, very thin restorations. Actually, it can be about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or 0 0.5. It will work, it will survive, because we have a lot of veneers uh, with, a, with that kind of thickness. But from palatal side, where you can have these uh, elastic deformations, actually, not flexural deformations, elastic deformations, uh, you may get these cracks. So in this case, the thickness of ceramic has to be pretty thick to resist that elastic deformation and good to have in one millimeter. Another reason why it may crack also is that if you have thin ceramic that will be bonded not to enamel but to dentin or to composite, you create under thin rigid layer of ceramic something pretty, pretty flexible and soft. That's why when there is any occlusal force thin ceramic may go into that so soft substrate and it may lead to fracture. So in this case we have uh, that two reasons of, uh, of fracture. Just take a look from the palatal side. From the palatal side we didn't have enamel in the palatal fossa. We had enamel in only in the cervical area, but the rest was already in dentin. So that's why we had the problem. The problem was caused by myself because I didn't follow instruction. I was sure that uh, minimally invasive dentistry and bonded ceramic may resist in a very thin layer, like in 0 0.5, but I was wrong in that case. So what I had to do, I had to replace these four anterior crown. The rest teeth were okay, by the way. I replaced four anterior crowns. I drilled out this ceramic with a burst using electric motor, increasing handpiece, uh, coarse burst, a lot of water with high speed, about 150 or 200 thousand revolutions per minute and I increased also uh, preparation in posterior area to give my dental technician there about one millimeter for the ceramic. So if you want to have ceramic survived in palatal aspects of frontal anterior teeth it has to be equal in terms of thickness. If you don't want, sometimes, if you don't want or you can't prep that much, you may use zirconium. Nowadays, a uh, 3 e uh, yttrium reinforced zirconia for anterior teeth can be used in 0 0.4 millimeter thickness because zirconia is two times stronger than Emacs. So basically, we can nowadays decrease amount of preparations by using more harder material like zirconia in such a case. Okay, so my friends, this is our final result. We made these restorations from monolithic zirconia, just, just stained and glazed. We bonded this material with, uh, with uh, we bonded this crown with a rubber dam, and this is the final result straight after rubber dam removal. Nowadays I have three years follow-up of these new restorations, um, which is which is good. There is no crack. Patient has no complaint. But 
the lesson that I learned from that case uh, is more valuable than any other um, information that I may get from the from the from the uh, prospect of the manufacturer. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to prove uh, recommendations by making mistakes of your own in your own cases. Unfortunately, but this is our life. So again, if you do your preparations of anterior frontal teeth. Uh, with lithium disilicate, you have to be very careful with palatal aspect of your preparations and thickness of material there. From vestibular part, it can be thinner because it will be bonded to more uh, plain surface. From palatal side, due to elastic deformation, you have to be you have to be very very caref careful. If you want to learn more about uh, strategies and protocols about uh, anterior crown preparations using Emacs or Zirconia. I would like to invite you to attend our online masterclass about preparation for full crown anterior teeth that is available on our web page. You can sign up and you'll have 14 days access. In this uh, online masterclass we will show you step by step different protocols for preparations. Zirconia crowns, Emacs crowns and also semi or three-quarter crown will be showed step by step in very precise uh, details. Till now I'm done. Uh, I would like to wish you not to make mistakes, to be healthy and may the dental force be with you guys. Bye-bye.